Twitter. Everybody. Hi everyone. Hello. Uh uh. Hold on. Mm. Bonjour. Hi, bon- what should say? Bonjour, monsieur. How you doing? Bonjour, monsieur. Mes amis. <laughs> what is that? My friends. Oh, how you know? Well, my partner is a French professor. I forgot your partner oh, speaks like eighteen different languages. True. I don't know any though. It just sounded oh, like a professor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Extra daddy layer. Yes. <laughs> Are you a dad bod guy? I can't see. Oh yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I cannot imagine that. Yeah. I would think you were into fit people like yourself. I'm into all body types, like one hundred percent of okay. them. <laughs> I am not mad at it. Yeah. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I feel fortunate. <laughs> hey, Regina. Hey, Eric. Miss you. Hey, everyone. Hey. Hi, everyone. Talk, we could talk amongst ourselves forever. If y'all not joining and tagging, hey. and like, and tagging and liking your friends and tagging your friends and liking them and, and, and sharing us, then... Oh, the fun. Carl, what you doing? <sighs> I'll have to ask Florin how to say French fries. I have no idea. What's the word for fry, Patrice? Fritz. Uh, Fritz. Fritz, yeah. Is that how you say it? Fritz. Fritz. Regina, you just have to put your own spin on it. (laughs) Yeah, it's Fritz. Fritz. F-R-I-T-E-S. Pronunciation. I think it's Fritz, but I'm not quite sure. Buenos noches. Buenos noches. Spanish, sir. (laughs) You want to know something before we get started? Good evening. Since y'all talking about that. So, y'all remember, I think it was... German, maybe I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. When uh, I, I forgot, what, I think I don't remember what class I was in. <laughs> and he was giving us the disclaimer about fag, the cigarette. The cigarette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What what language is that in? You English. say it everywhere. I know it from England. In okay. Australia. So you, I, can say I, I'm, I'm, you can say I'm smoking the okay. fuck. <laughs> and so. Um, so, so it, as a matter of fact, it was my art teacher, and and no, it was um, my, it was a theater teacher. So they 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 had to trip to the theater class. They took a trip to um, England, and so there was it was grouped and there was it was a group of them. They were standing around and whatever. And I think I guess the person that was smoking that was asking for a cigarette didn't know that they were underage. And I think maybe the age is different over there anyway for, for you to smoke. It is. Um, so. Um, the person was like, hey, talking to all of them, and all of them are boys from America, so they don't know, like, <laughs> so, they, so he said, you know the first asked them, hey, and you guys have a fag? So all of them were looking like, like, try to like, <laughs> what'd you call me? Yeah. Like, basically, you talking to them. They didn't know what that meant over there, and it's like, you know, it meant something else only over here, so right. that was funny. Um, so, hey, hey, everybody, how's everybody doing? Hey. Hey Ronald. Hey, hey Pop. Hey. Hey, hey Eric. Oh my God. Oh, Eric's on. <laughs> hey Jay. Jay Ingram. Regina. Course, hello, you? Regina. Hey. <laughs> Buenos noches. Um noches. <laughs> Buenos noches. So Good evening. Um, we are going to be talking about some things today, but before we get started, you know, we want to introduce ourselves, what we do, who we are. Hey, Prince. Hey, PJ. Um, and so I am Johnny. Um, this is the outreach team, and we are the outreach um, of Rain coming at you live. Where is my banner? Somebody find my banner so I can put it up there. Where's my banner? I don't see it. No. You just can't. You just discombobulated in a new yeah. year. Okay. okay. Keep oh, that's time. cute. I like that. <laughs> Exclamation uh, point. But anyway, um, <laughs> so I want to give a shout out to our sister organization, Crew, stands for Community Resources, Empowerment, and Wellness. What's up, Crew? Uh, 
and up and a slash um, project uplift. Um, both of those are two different organizations that are actually combined. Um, Crew is for mental health and substance use, as well as Project Uplift is for the whole LGBT community, LGBT plus community. Um, that's that is not um, or that do not want to come or that is not accessing case management elsewhere. Um, you need case management services. You can definitely go there and and and, and take advantage of those services. Um, so with that being said, um, I want to give it over to this team and they can introduce themselves and what they do. Um, Bryce is right beside me. I can give it over to Bryce. Hi, I'm Bryce. <laughs> I'm the parentage specialist at Rain. So what I do is that I work with clients who are positive, who get out of care, and I get them re-engaged into care. Also, if you're newly diagnosed, I help you get into care too. Um, I case manage you for a year, and my job is to help you learn how to navigate your health care and be retaining your care. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hi! I knew you was going to do that to me. This is Patrice. Of course, I'm the prep manager here at Rain. Um, I offer a prep program that gives you case management as well as being able to get on prep and go to the doctor with little to no cost. If you are interested or know someone that's interested, please give me a call at the number below. <laughs> This close up is so I'm like instant blush. <laughs> um, did Bryce, did you miss part of your role? Are we announcing? Do we need oh, to go back? I don't know, Tab. Oh, I think sounds... we don't do that. Just don't do that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, <laughs> Um, I am Jesse. I'm the research coordinator. Um, and we are enrolling actively now in yes. three studies, right? Mm -hmm. um, two for folks living with HIV, one for folks who have not been tested in a while, but would like to come in and get a test and make some money. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're interested in any of these studies, you can go to our website, carolinarain.org, um, or you can text that number and say hi okay um and also next week um when um i'm sorry so jesse may not be jesse won't be on next week however we're going to still talk about the studies and we are going to have some graphics and i'm looking at jesse with a side eye um <laughs> we're making a studies, um <laughs> uh, those studies, you, can, you can kind of look at them and we can kind of talk about talk a little bit more a little bit more about screenings and qualifications and, and getting you there and making sure that if you're watching this live and you're not and we're finished off the live you don't forget about the study you can actually go somewhere and, and make sure that you're doing the screening if you're interested um because mm -hmm. we want to see you we want to see you make some money too and they're okay. fun they're great studies okay. they are. yeah they are all right so um, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and 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 segue to our keeping it. What is what is it? Um, listen up with Sean. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen up with Sean. So okay. it's gonna be listen up with the outreach team because we're all gonna be doing it together. <laughs> Sean is not here today. Um, so y'all have y'all have to bear with us and 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 whatever you know y'all. So, you know, we all come from a different background. We all not urban like Sean is, and we all not uh, we not we not always like really in the know with the current topics. At least I'm not. At least I come speaking for myself, not for not for everybody else. So I'm gonna try my best. The first thing I want to talk about, and y'all can, can let me know, is to y'all know tomorrow. I'm sorry, Friday at eight thirty. I'm gonna have my popcorn, my snacks, not your popcorn, my large no. soda. Not the large. I'm gonna be snuggled up on my couch watching the Wendy Williams movie. <laughs> because it comes on Saturday. So I am super excited in my onesie. I am super excited. Um, I have been talking about this with all my friends all week. Um, <laughs> still family, has. It, it is a big thing for me. Like I love this woman. She is my aunt. She's a TV. Um so I'm so excited for her movie, and she also is a documentary before the movie. So it's it's pretty much like a like maybe like I want to say a four hour event. Um, so I'm going to be like mm -hmm. for this. That's yeah. a lot of popcorn, Johnny. Four hours. Yes, 
I'm so ready for this. I'm so ready. I'm not going to leave my that spot for four hours watching her. Well, make I, sure you tell me how it goes, Chuck. I will. I wish, I, wish, <laughs> I, wish, I wish you would just watch. I need an honest report from you. I don't want the Johnny report. I need the <laughs> honest report. Right. And then I'm so mad because initially when she talked about it a couple of years ago, she wanted Robin Gibbons to play her. Okay, I'm not gonna do this with y'all. Y'all not, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not doing this with y'all today. I'm not gonna do it. <sighs> I feel like Robin Gibbons maybe a little look a little too feminine for her. They both they both have the like high cheekbones. They both have the high. I'm about to go. I see. I'm not <laughs> next caller. <laughs> <laughs> next caller. <laughs> Ever. Um, so that's so that is happening this Saturday. Who all um in the comments? So either one of y'all saw the Salt and Pepper the, uh, movie on Lifetime, um Saturday this, this this last Saturday. I didn't see. My mother told me about it though. She talked about it. What she say about it? Was it good? She said she enjoyed it. She said so she Lifetime. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jay. <laughs> no, we're not doing this. Which also, Jay, you have been extra out of my friend list because we're not we're not doing that. <laughs> Until I saw the kid, yeah, I was right there with you. I never thought of that of her. I just thought you know she had a lot of plastic surgery. That's it. Regina's gonna be watching Wendy Williams too. Have you seen? Have you ever seen her when she turns to the side? Yeah. For sure. I'm about to like clock you out. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and clock out for me, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. Go ahead, go ahead and log out for me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and log out for me, baby. So, oh, on the other oh. hand, uh, moving along, if nobody else has anything to say about that win, who heard? So, I, I know this is going to break a lot of y'all feelings. Um, Keeping up with the Kardashians' final season oh, um, just aired their trailer, and they were talking about it. It's so emotional. Right. So, you know, they first came on when I was in the second grade. Me and Kylie were born the same year. So she's been wow. on reality TV since she was in second grade. Wow. That is I'm so that's how long people have been on for a Me either. Long time. They, they have anything? Have any no. I don't mm-hmm. understand. I don't understand the purpose or the point of them having a show. Um, you know, because the father did the OJ case and you know her mom sold her sex tape you know they all forgave each other you know you know niggas. her mom is her pimp <laughs> yeah she i followed the caitlin jenner stuff that i mean that was like worth following like oh, her, yeah. her that was crazy thing. her and who they thought caitlin jenner caitlin like her bruce they thought bruce was having an affair but she was really transitioning to caitlin right and that was like you know cool to see like an olympian yeah, be be vocal about transitioning. The rest of it to me is total bullshit, though. Like the Kardashians, it's like, oh, you have money, and you're just like, mm. <sighs> and Calabasas. Yeah. And so to add to what Bryce was saying, yes, that their first episode date was October fourteenth, two thousand and seven, and they look they were beat up. So this is the fifth. <laughs> <season. laughs> <laughs> they will be up, <laughs> but that's but I but Bryce, that's all reality shows like the first season. Yeah, like, you're right. Housewives, that like do, do you see them girls? Yes, season one to their season now. Nene, as a matter of fact, um, what is it? What what was the other one? Um, Sheree, Nene, Basketball Wives, Tammy was busted at, at, in the first season. <laughs> oh my gosh. They like it's a, it's a whole busted. different paycheck now. The Kardashians, they were busted the first season, but they came a long way, child. I mean, plastic surgery buys a lot. It does. The only one that still looks the same is Courtney. I love Courtney. That's my favorite one. So you follow it closely. Who me? Yeah. So like no, not really. I was like, raised I, on I, um reality but, TV. Like, but like, 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 but like, I know enough to kind of have. Which a is not good. Stuff, if that makes sense. Kim um, of the Kardashians, Flavor of Love. Oh yeah, oh, and I Bad Girls Flavor. Club, Snooky, Snooky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Jersey Shore. Yeah, mm-hmm. I watched all of that. So like, when reality TV hit like its golden peak, I was like in fourth grade. So from there to now, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! The only re- reality show I really watch is Project Runway, and that I like was Project Runway so good. I love. Project what do you Runway. think about the verses? I I feel like Ashanti one because I feel like Keisha Cole came with a whole attitude. 
it's not the same no more. If you're not doing it from your house, it's just a fucking listening party concert. <laughs> I haven't seen this one. It's no longer that one, Jesse. It's called Versus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So right. during the 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 lockdown, mm-hmm. there were a lot of artists that uh, started coming online and doing like all these different kinds of things. You had some that did live uh, mixed DJ shows. You had mm-hmm. some panels and then you had um a group of guys came up with the idea to do versus battles mm-hmm. and so were in their own studios at their house and they were just doing verses like all of their songs like let's say like they had boo you and damn Eric know- Badu and Joe Scott they had yeah. Snoop Dogg and DMX and they would just like go like do sets together no, they would go song for song and talk mm-hmm. about like their hits and the different people in their hits, like mm-hmm. kind of like that's that. cool. And they Gucci did Riley and um, Babyface, like you know, different things. People that are kind of the same level in their genre. <laughs> oh yeah. So I, I didn't watch it because I'm I'm not a big fan of neither one of them. However, um, I, uh, I'm not I'm not a fan of neither one of them. Keish, I did never like Keisha and Ashanti can't sing to me. Destiny to hear there. Um, so, um, <laughs> however, I, did see, I did see little clips, and the clip that I did see was with Keisha Cole and Ashanti, like, like I feel like Ashanti. The clip that I saw, Ashanti was trying to like defuse the situation because Keisha was like, um, "It's my turn," and Ashanti was like, "No, you just went." And Keisha was like, "Girl, it's my turn." Um, um, try music, but Ashanti, but Keisha was drunk. Um, you could tell that she was drunk. Um, and Ashanti was trying to hold it together and like keep the peace and things like that. But I didn't watch it because I don't like Keisha Cole songs and I and, and I don't like Ashanti singing. So, ouch. Like, yeah, I, I'm I'm not a fan of neither one of them. Mm-mm. Dang. For me, the most the the biggest one that I liked it, and you guys can kind of share your thoughts. I know oh my Jeff, God, Brandy. No, no. I'm gonna no. read you a poem. No, no, no. Hey, Brandy. The one that I liked the most was um Jill Scott and Erica mm. Badu. I watched that, that hour like from minute to minute. Like I did not get up really I watched that all the way through. So I, that was amazing. Um to see the women celebrating each other like that. So I like mm. Hey Bell and Gladys Knight too. They did that? Mm-hmm. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Wow. Yes, they did. Well, yeah, that would have been interesting, probably. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. good. That one was really good too. Um, Subway is being sued. Slurps. Y'all still eat Subway? I sued Subway. <laughs> Subway is being sued. Um, th- mm-hmm. There are talks that the tuna sandwich doesn't contain any tuna at all. What is um, it? So. Wow! They, so it's been like um uh so they, they didn't they didn't really name the ingredients. It was like um, sh- what is it? What they say? Um, it's usually just like other fish, right? It, it just says, see, it just says a mixture of various concoctions that do not con- con- that do not constitute tuna have been blended together by defendants to imitate the appearance of tuna. It's just like the salmon that they sell, that so called coho salmon. It's not. But who goes to a restaurant with a tuna sandwich, though? Uh, but people, I eat tuna. I love Subway tuna. It's delicious. It is really good. <laughs> so, Subway. Listen, I pull up, I get that chocolate chip cookie, and I leave. That's no, it. I, <laughs> I, 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 I like Subway. <laughs> Subway's good. It's easy. It's, yeah. it's, it's fresh. You can smother it in anything you want. Yeah. I like Jersey Mike's. With the veggies. I like Jimmy John's. I do so, love Jersey Mike's. Jimmy yeah. John's was very disappointing to me. Yeah, I don't like Jimmy John's either. I hate Jimmy John's. It's very um, generic. Like, you can make a better sandwich at home. And sure. I feel like the bread is too thick. You know? You know the, bread bread is too thick. the bread is yeah. never too thick. Mm. Who was in the book of Guinness World Records? Ashanti? Stop that. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Hey. I gotta find that, that that gift and start putting it, putting it up here when that happens. Who said that? 
<laughs> she might be. Ashanti wrote a lot of good songs for a lot of people. Uh, okay. Wrote. Okay. <laughs> Writing. Jeremy. So, Jay, that is my favorite sandwich at um, Subway is the sweet onion chicken teriyaki. I'll get it. Yeah, the first so. battle I like was Beanie Man and Bougie Bonton. And that was pretty good. I like that they one. They had too. like the highest. Uh, people watching it any of the way Beanie Man was dancing, girl. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm stuck on Meatball Hero. What's Meatball Hero? It's the sandwich itself. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> um, so Subway did respond and they said that, that that is totally not true. Um, they stand by their product, they, they stand by their product and deny the claim. So We'll see. I saw some dude. I saw me somewhere after that spokesman scandal. Uh, the spokesman scandal. Uh, what's the name? What you call it? Jared. Yeah. Yes. Oh. They can't do nothing. They can't bust a grape after that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. The, the, okay. The driver of the white van out here. So we about to be at the top of the hour. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and I like I, I like I like I like saying that I'm that just gonna be so fancy. Top of the hour to you. Um so we're about to get go ahead and actually segue into our segment. Today's segment is stress, stress and, anxiety. and anxiety. Oh god, here we go. Uh, Let me open my diary. Dear diary. <laughs> dear Patrice. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna need you to go ahead to that yoga class and get your stretch on. Mm-hmm. Deep breaths. Deep I know, breaths. I know somebody who can definitely attest to that. The invite is open. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with you one day. Please, please do. So, so, let's get to the nitty and gritty. Okay. Hmm, feeling anxious. What are your trick? What triggers your anxiety? What, what triggers your anxiety? Mm. What doesn't? Uh, <laughs> so I don't know so much. Uh, so if I have something big coming up, like um, events or uh, like big orders or something that I have to do that's like really important it'll give me anxiety mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, right up until the day of, and then I'm calm. Um, when I'm hungry, I get anxiety right before I get angry. <laughs> I'm serious. Yes. I'm an angry, hungry person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but those are really, oh, and <sighs> Unsolicited lies. Uh huh. Yeah, that's about it. Mm-hmm. And can you explain to to the people in the back what an unsolicited lie is? Unsolicited lies are when you have a friend or you know someone, and they feel like they need to lie about either what they're doing, their lives, what they've been up to, basically anything. But at the end of the day, you didn't ask them any of this shit. All you said was, hey, how you doing? And then you get the, oh, well, you know, I'm a, I just, you know, I started taking these classes at school and, you know, then I met this dude who heard me sing. And so now I'm in the studio and, you know, something should be coming out in a couple of months. You should look for it. All of that. Yeah, I went to the studio real fast. Yeah. This morning, this morning between, did you fuck him? Well, you know, they got studios on damn near every corner in Charlotte now. Yeah. True. Get into a studio now. <laughs> Not studio time. Studio session. Working on my vocals. <laughs> okay. I think for me, it's really hard for me to it's really hard for me to identify um what triggers my anxiety because I think that I work best under pressure. Mm. I work best under anxiety. I work better. I, I, I think that's where I get Press my best. That's how That's I, where I get my best results from um, when I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, and I was like that in school. Like I was purposely late to the last minute and and and, and turn the paper in like the night of me typing it. Um, and it'd be it'd be 
be I be like the masterpiece. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just work best. I just, I do. I've always worked best under like pressure. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm things like that. So definitely for me, um, walking into a public place and not seeing somebody I know, like if. If you tell me to meet you somewhere and I'm going there and I assume walk in the room and I don't see you, I'm like, oh my God, where are you? <sighs> like, where are you at? And then I call you, I'm like, where are you at? Yeah. Arm in the back. I don't see you. Come to- <laughs> <laughs> Like, that gives me anxiety. Another thing that gives me anxiety is driving. Like, all my life, I've always been in car accidents and I've seen a lot of other car accidents. Mm-hmm. And it's like, as soon as I get comfortable driving again, boom, I get into an accident. That wasn't even my fault. Like, like I'm dream. driving. Minding my business, and then hey, you come swear to my lane and hit me. I hate driving. I hate taking the highway. I only take the highway when I absolutely have to. Like people yeah. think the highway is easier to deal with than the um the city roads. I I've actually got seen I, not me personally, but a lot of my friends and a lot of my cousins, my like my. So you know we're from the south. So our older cousins are really uh, we call them my aunts and uncles, but they really I do that too. But. Um, so a lot of my aunts and uncles slash cousins that are older and like their fifties and sixties, um, have like told me they have never drove on, driven on the highway. They scared to drive on the highway. They, they won't do it. it. It's just not, um, so they wouldn't even visit when I stayed on the other side of town, they wouldn't even come visit me because they have to get on the highway to come see me. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, yeah. like, and, 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 and independence was, is what's considered a highway to them. So. Yeah, uh, it is. Now. Um, it, it in, yeah, but back in the day, it was a two lane. Sh- sh- it was. It wasn't. It is now, most definitely. But back in the day, it was not a. It wasn't. It. It was a two lane. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't. It was not highway. Yeah. So, but I, but they wouldn't drive on it. Um, mm-hmm. and and I'm sorry to cut you off, but you made me think of something. Um, uh, I do get anxiety. Um, uh, with with um, with with the um, what is it? The emergency vehicles. The um, when, when and the police, police. Yeah. police when they have their sirens and stuff on, um, I have to pull over and and and, and breathe for a second because I I I, I freak out. Mm-hmm. Um, I got hit by a state trooper, um, a couple of years ago. Um, and I've never and I've always been it's always it's nerve wracking to, to hear that. And I'm driving and I just I don't I, I freeze up. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to as, as possible. I don't care how far it is down the street. <clears throat> over and i want to sit here until it passes or until it figure out what it's going to do um that that does give me anxiety i apologize mm. I, I forgot yeah. about that no you're good this is the only city i've been where people get on the highway slow but get off the highway flying yeah like they'll get on the highway going 15 miles per hour but when it's time to exit don't ex- hit the exit on 80 and i'm like that's the complete opposite of what you're supposed to do <laughs> you're supposed to <clears throat> into the highway that you're supposed to reduce your speed getting off the highway like it's just Ridiculous. Yes, what's your uh, trigger, sir? Uh, I think I, I think that there's a bunch of different types of anxiety, but um, the two in my life that show up are like the anticipatory anxiety, like before giving a presentation, mm-hmm. especially if it's a big crowd, like um, coming on to this session and just you know <laughs> get a little, a little jitters, um, and then. And then I think the other like existential anxiety is like the debilitating kind is just any time that I like think about the past or like ruminate, you know, on like the dark times in life. Mm-hmm. It just like really, really gets like that anxiety that comes up at like two in the morning. Yeah. Like oh yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. See, now I yeah. feel weird. Why? I don't have that. <laughs> You know how so many people are like they want to find like their meaning or their path in life. Mm. I think that's so silly. <laughs> <laughs> There's what not. I mean, place? like your career is not the reason that you were born. Right. I don't understand. Like, right. in, live your life in any way you would like to is the reason that you're born. Like this whole finding my destiny and all that. And fuck that shit. That's stupid. I agree. Yeah. We Sorry were just talking about that recently. It's like, who are you to think that you deserve like a purpose? Do exactly. you know what I mean? It's like we we all have multiple, many, more than many things that we can offer. Yeah. Also- see, I'm part of the make everyone feel special generation. Like when I was growing up, we were told like there are no losers, everybody wins. But that's not true. You're gonna lose. And like, there are losers. Like, but so when we had like competitions and stuff. We would have like my stepfather told me it was only you came in first, second, or third. 
But now you have first, second, third, but the best trier or like you said the best. Like everybody has to be made to feel like they win all the time. And I hate that. The like, participation. Rhythm. Yeah. Like, no, baby, you lost and it's okay. Yeah. I'm glad that was after me. <laughs> Johnny, you believe in purpose? You believe in purpose? Single, have, solitary y'all, purpose? Y'all have blew me <laughs> completely. Yes, I believe in purpose. I believe in destiny. I believe in all of that. I, he I, also burns sage at his house, though, y'all. So I do too. Look, I, I'm a I spiritual sage. I yeah. believe everything yeah. happens for a reason. And I feel like there's a reason behind everything. That's what I believe. <laughs> I do. <laughs> like, I feel like everything happens for a reason. What did Jay say? Can you like highlight the comments? My oh, yeah. anxiety is taking it. Oh, shit. Okay. Whoa. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no, that would that would destroy me. Well, when the, if the artist called you out, yes, mm. you know, I don't like I don't like people looking at me, so that 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 drives I'm me. I'm gonna up. be honest, they call me out, right? Well, I would probably melt, <laughs> right? Yeah, no. okay. <laughs> please be honest. <laughs> Have you seen that video where she like hands the mic to a girl and she tries to sing and she's like, "Ooh, like she's singing." Yeah, I, can't, I, know, I, I, can't know, I know exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Hey, bro. Oh my god! Yes. Or, even with my anxiety, there be moments and times when I just get like random waves of panic for no reason. Like you get what? Random waves of like panic for no reason. Mm. Like out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like you just be pushing your shopping cart down like in the store and then like boom. Like, like you're in panic mode. And I'm just like, why well, am I in panic mode? Oh yeah, no. But see, when I'm in a tough situation, my response is flight or fight. So like, when I got to that car accident, I was like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Like, I gotta punch the door. I wasn't the type of person that froze. Like, oh my god, what just happened? Like, I'm not that person. I'm the person. I'd be like, look, we gotta get the fuck out. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> this can't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Like one time when it was like was, was popping off in our neighborhood, me and my sister were walking and I started running. And my sister's like, What's going on? I had to grab her by her shirt. And I'm like, Girl, like, you don't stop, you run. Like, they shoot and run. I'm like, What are you doing? And, and see, I'm not stop. Like, I'm not stop and look around person. Yeah, like, she's the type to be like, What's happening? How close are they to me? Yeah. That's my question. Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> you got to go. This next one. Oh, okay. Mm. I feel like stress is defined by something that you that this comes and you deal with it. And I feel like anxiety is a lifetime, lifelong thing. I feel like anxiety is more of a mental illness, and stress is like something that's just going to happen regardless. If that makes any sense, like I agree with the part that like yeah, uh, that stress kind of ebbs and flows. It's like mm-hmm. a wave. Um, I think stress builds and anxiety can be like a constant. It's like a mm-hmm. constant thing that you work on. But stress is like if you take a new role at work and it's really difficult and you let the stress build because you do all the tasks on your own and then you figure out mm-hmm. a way to get through that, then it's you know, <laughs> up and down. Patrice, uh, I can't uh, read your definition? face. <laughs> yes, that's my definition. <laughs> Go ahead, Johnny. Um, I, mm, so <laughs> I do feel like anxiety and stress is different. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I, like, okay, for instance, I can go home and oh, my house is not being clean, stresses me out. Yes, it doesn't give me anxiety. No, 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 no. no. I'm stressed out. My house yes. is not clean. Um, why is my house not clean? I'm stressed out. I'm exhausted. You, Y'all like, getting cussed out. This is draining me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is what stress means to me. Um, it gives you anxiety. It does not stress you out. Love. It stresses me out. It, I'm drained. I don't know what to do. I want to go in. Anxiety shower. drains you. I just. I don't know. It's. <laughs> uh, I just like the 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 life in me just. Really, <laughs> like, that's how like, <laughs> um, oh lord, I'm, I'm instantly tired. Um, 
Because I, I I can still work in anxiety. I can still work. But when I'm stressed out, I am stressed out. Like, uh-uh. Um. Because they're neat freaks, and I always laugh at them about this, Jay. This is an ongoing conversation. It is. <laughs> Especially when I have a place for everything and it's out of place, who been in my house? Oh my god! No I, cannot it. Stand when <laughs> I cannot stand when the covers are left on the couch the next morning mm. and you're in the bed, and the covers are still there from when you was laying there lounging the night before. Like, why didn't you fold this up before you went to sleep? Like, why is it still here? I don't get it. I'm stressed out. Oh my god! The exact same issue. <laughs> <laughs> even my even my desk at work, like I know somebody been at my desk. I'm like, okay. Yeah, you keep your desk immaculate. <laughs> I'd be so mad when I walk by your desk, like these mother. That's why I be at my desk cleaning my desk, like these motherfuckers got me in here. <laughs> like, damn it! <laughs> this is the bullshit. No, but how you feel, Patrice? What separates stress from anxiety? Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> anxiety is de defined as experiencing worry, unease, or nervousness, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. Stress, by psychology terms, is the perception of pressure on one hand and the body's response to it on the other, which involves multiple symptoms from metabolism to, mu to muscle memory. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's just saying that stress is more harmful to you than anxiety. Stress causes physical reactions, uh, mental reactions. Um, I have four bleeding ulcers from stress, so it gets weird. Mm. It gets real weird. Because mm -hmm. I had those, my first one I think I had when I was like 21. But that was my fault. I used to take a lot of ibuprofen for my... Um, migraines i think that's the thing with like the physical implications of stress too it's like if there's too much it'll fuck you up but if there's like a little bit it'll do what it does for johnny and like really help you get things done whereas anxiety is just like you know annoying always yeah like i can handle stress like johnny says i'm used to being under stress it's not really a problem for me mentally my body might be like hey Hey, crazy, sit down. But I think it's fine. That's just how I'm. I'm. I know I can get things done when I'm under pressure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to know a secret? Yes. So, and this is a healthy sexual conversation I'm about to have with you guys. So, <laughs> bear with me. I'm about to spice it up a little bit. Um. How I know the difference between whether I'm being stressed out or if, 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 or if it's anxiety, my booty hole cringe. Yes. Two times. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm drinking. And I had too much alcohol. My butt start pulsating. And, and when I'm when I'm in anxiety and I don't know what to do, my butt start pulsating like that. Interesting. Um, and I don't know why that is. I don't know what. The signaling what's going on for my brain to, to go to, to go on down there, but it does it all the time, and and I can't sit down because it's like it ain't thriving like it's hurting, but it's like that nice little pulsating feeling, like ooh, like it, I don't know, it's, 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 a weird thing. It, it's weird to me, but it happens every single time that I feel anxiety or I'm drinking. Maybe your anxiety response is horniness, and that's like your body like telling you. Maybe. You know, when I'm stressed out, I get angry. Well, that's my favorite emotion anyway. Mm -hmm. but I do. Uh, after you said that, I um, way back when, when I didn't have a driver's license, every time I would see a cop go by, I would get anxious and I would feel it in my stomach. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, oh, God, <laughs> please, <laughs> <Not today. laughs> please, please let them keep going. Please. That is what Whoa. Really? Mm -hmm. That's what's up. White weeds? I didn't know they made those. No, that is wet. Lord. But yeah. 
Mm. I don't so, get as anxious as I am stressed. Like anxiety for me is like a new thing, like in the last two years. So we, we talked about defining stress and anxiety, but. Ooh, I'm all right. I was in denial about my anxiety. My mother had to tell me I had anxiety and I was like, girl, leave me alone. Well, and I also think too, you know, he wasn't taught what the hell that was anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, right. not, not his kids. Like, you know, so it's like I don't necessarily it may be a denial mechanism now, but I think for a long time it was ignorance in regards to like we didn't know what that was, know what that means, no mm-hmm. name towards how we were feeling. We were just mm-hmm. feeling the way. Um and that, in my opinion, um mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that now it, it's easy to identify it with a lot of people because there's a name like that. I ain't gonna say there's like a new name for it because that's we know them words are not new, but we know better, you know. Mm-hmm. So, right, yeah. I agree I with you, Johnny. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Bryce. No, I was about to say, I used to have anxiety telling my parents things because they used to blow everything out of proportion, like they're very dramatic. So, I didn't want to tell them anything, so I just kept it to myself. But they'd be like, Oh, you have a son, if you ever need anything, are you going to do something? Tell us, but it's like, nah, girl, but you're just going. <laughs> You're gonna make it worse than what it needs to be. So I'm just gonna it's gonna go the wrong way. Yeah. So yeah. I can take that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, I, I used to get anxiety yeah. talking to my mom too. Uh, and it, and it, and we can be having a good conversation. And <laughs> I'm scared I'm gonna do the wrong thing. Um, yes. she's, you know, and and it went, and my, my mama is wet and like a mean mom. Like she didn't beat me and anything like that. It's just my mother was very opinionated, like I am, and whatever, and and so she talked with her facial expression, she talked with her body language, things like that, and it was very intimidating sometimes. And I and she never understood that until we got older. Uh, but she just always put her all into a conversation, and and so her, her emotions was always kind of like it always eluded mad it always eluded frustrated it always eluded like one of those like things that i just didn't want to deal with so i just didn't i didn't care to talk to her um and things like that um and like i said and we can be having a good conversation it wasn't anything that was bad happening what she was getting on me it's just how she eluded how and but honestly most of the women in my family on my mama's side are all like that they all kind of talk really loud they all kind of talk like they're very passionate about things and things like that so they all kind of it, you know, it's just like you have to yield to them a lot because you know they're going to talk over talking and yell and scream and things like that, and they don't mean no harm. That's just that's just how they were brought up, and that's how you know we were taught growing up. So they used to give me anxiety too. Mm-hmm. Jesse, yes. <laughs> um, I was gonna just say that I agree with Johnny. I think that it's a new concept for a lot of people and even those that it's not a new concept for um anxiety shows up differently for everyone and so it's like learning your your body and how you respond to things so i don't know that denial is really a way to like even if someone doesn't recognize i don't think that's denial i think it's just like what is this very uncomfortable feeling i don't know how to label it yeah well, then you always can also get like in my generation, it was very much, oh, you're fine, just suck it up, go to bed, you'll feel better tomorrow. Um, and then once I was an adult, well, after going through college and psychology classes, you'll be like, yeah, no, <laughs> not a suck it up moment, mm-hmm. not really, right what I want to do. I want to hurt people and you want me to let it go. That's <laughs> how it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. this next one that I've seen that one of my colleagues put on here is is, is going to um, hit the fan. <laughs> Not necessarily hit the fan, but I I just, it's, 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 it's an interesting mm-hmm. concept. So mm-hmm. I'm about to write it up and y'all get ready. Mm-hmm. I'm just over here snacking. No. I know. But the police do give me anxiety, though. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that anxiety comes from what I've seen happen to other Black people in America or just, I don't know. Um, over the last mm-hmm. year, um, I've had my ups and downs about this. Um, and um, and I've actually, uh, and what Jesse was, what Jesse was testing to earlier, like it's not just like over the last year, I've had more time to analyze this as an adult male and look at this and understand this a lot better and then put some and put and then put words to it. Um, but um, anxiety about being black in America comes up when it comes up, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like I can't have anxiety about being black in America because that is my everyday life. However, comma, when something happens or I see something happen, then it comes up and things like that. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, so there are times where like, um, like I got pulled over by the police a couple of weeks ago and, you know, normal, you know, as what normally I, I feel like I can probably just pulled over. No, I went to a grocery store or I went to a, a service station to make sure that everybody see me and like that and everybody everything was lit up because yeah. like, I'm nervous I've gotten about stuff like that. Um or like or make sure there was a camera, not just your camera on your on your thing, but a camera at the store that can kind of capture mm-hmm. what's happening. Um and one of the things that I also like is what I also liked about what what that took place that night is that the, another car random by a random car passing a random car that saw him saw the police that saw the police actually turn on his lights followed me and the police into the store and waited and everything D- didn't know me from a can of paint and waited and whatever and like once the police got my id and things like that and went back to his car he like drove up beside me he was like are you okay and I was like, yeah, because I'm, I'm gonna stand right here at the, I'm gonna I'm go to the, the gas pump and stay here. So you think I'm pumping gas just to make sure that you stay okay, that you're okay, and whatever. And I instantly, you know me, <laughs> fall and cry because it's like it's a shame that we have to do that for our people. It's a shame we have to do stuff like that, you know, um, because it, it's like, oh my gosh. So like when I think about things like that, that gives me anxiety that I have to live like that. Um, or I, that that stuff like that has to happen. Or I have to second guess, you know, me being pulled over by somebody that's supposed to be protecting me, um, or you know, things like that. So stuff like that does. Or like, for instance, I don't know if I was telling you guys. I told you guys a long time ago. The little kids, like you know, back in the day, we played not not Zoom Zoom. That was our shit. We played that all the time. And it's like that. I, well, I played it. I, Patrice giving me the funny face, but I, we played. It. Country, so it's a different thing. Go ahead. <laughs> So if you stayed in Charlotte, North Carolina, back in the late nineties, early two thousands, you played knock knock zoom zoom. That we played that in every in every corner of the city. You played knock knock zoom zoom. Is um, that knock and then you leave? You knock knock. Yeah, you knock knock and then you run off. Um, okay. and things like that. Um, uh, and so you know playing that was fun. Things like that. You kind of played it in your neighborhood and things like that. You know, and now. It's like nerve wracking to play that. So you know these kids were in my neighborhood and they were they were playing it and whatever. Um, and it was just like stressing me out when it, they did they did it at my door. I didn't know they they did it at my door and they ran off things like that. But to think that they you know and and and, and, and they were black kids and to think that they you know could knock at the wrong door at that moment and 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 something happened to them. Um, but because they went to a, a house, a private house. And whatever, and um, because they went to somebody's house, you know, and knocked on the door, things like that, and something happened to them. That story would never be told. Like it'll be they were trying to break in, as opposed to mm-hmm. no, these little homeless kids are playing knock knock zoom zoom, and that's just like we wouldn't get that that um that that um that headline. We would get something totally different. Um, so and it's a little stuff like that, you know. I think about. Anxiety and black, and I talked way too much just now. And I apologize. No, you could take, please take this. <laughs> I don't, uh, mm-hmm. I don't have anxiety, I have um, grown past that space. I mean, I grew up in a town where the Klan marched up until my sophomore year in college, 
So I am very comfortable around anybody being the only black person in the room. That was most of my school. Um, doesn't bother me. Um, when I see things happen, it makes me angry. I get really, really angry. I, there, there's no anxiety. There's no crying. That shit is, has sailed. That shit sailed a long time ago. Um, for me, it just becomes anger at the continuation of something that is clearly an issue, but also doesn't want to be addressed. Um, mm -hmm. There are so many things that you will live with as being a minority, no matter where you're at. Um, and I can deal with, you know, the questions, people asking, you know, uh, why does your hair do that? Or why do you wear your hair like this? Or, you know, do you guys like to eat this? Or I love all that kind of stuff. Love to have those kinds of conversations because that's the only way you learn about people in general. Like the conversation of washcloth, bar of soap, or loofah <laughs> is my favorite. <laughs> it's amazing. Lord. You have that conversation and shit will just start popping out. But, you know, I think right. it's... Or the conversation, do you even wash your legs in the shower? Some people are like, I don't even wash my legs. I just let the soap run down. I'm like, girl, you got to wash your legs. Like, Do you shave your legs? I don't like yeah. <laughs> That whole thing about people peeing in the shower mm -hmm. fucked my head up. I had never heard that before. I'm kind of jealous about it because I've hopped out of the shower soaking wet and went to the bathroom and hopped my dumb ass back in there. To pee? Yeah. I pee in the shower every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you guys have outward yeah. items. Into yeah. <laughs> if I pee in the shower, it's going to be running down my leg. Yes. Yeah, but then you're just like, I don't know, you just let it rinse off. Oh my God. Yeah, the Briante said, my anxiety only came up once when I went to PWI in the real world. I felt the difference. Like, damn, What's the black PWI? People, white people's college, right? Like, public white institution. People really yeah. are. <laughs> I was the opposite. Yeah. He said, no, I'm not I'm really anxious, just more aware. If I'm still anxious all the time, I would go crazy. I can't live in fear. I remember my freshman year at Central, the KKK came to um on campus and we chased after them. So we collectively like jumped them. Cause it was like we're not doing that. Like it's 2015. Why y'all here? Briante said he also so I he switched that and says that anxiety is gone, but he also gets he gets angry to like what Patrice was talking about. Yeah, I'm with Patrice now. Every time I see something happen as it relates to like police brutality no, and black people. I just get angry. I just get mad. Yeah. I'm just over, like, I'm over crying and being sad and, like, holding hands and saying kumbaya, like. Yeah. I'm over it. I'm just an angry bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right, Regina, because that's what it looks like to you. Okay. I, wish, like, you know, I, I would jump out the shower. So here's the yes. thing. Yes. So like I do go to the bathroom before I get in the shower. It's just by habit I, I do that anyway. But like whenever my body temperature change, I have to pee again. <laughs> um instantly, no matter what. So I can just use the bathroom that literally got off the toilet right then and there. And I hop right in the shower, don't do nothing else. I get in the shower, that water hit my skin and my body temperature adjusts, I gotta pee. I've never heard that and I love love that about you. <laughs> That is funny. You That's know, cool. now I'm walking around with a cup of ice cold water. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just oh, really. Lord. So this is the last thing before before we before we mm. leave and leave out with just the tip. Mm, do you think Black Americans send my against anxiety, depression? Mm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Someone can, can somebody read that, please? Do you think that Black America has a stigma against anxiety, depression, and medication? How do you combat that stigma when it relates to talking to your friends and family? Um. So, yes, most definitely. I do think that. Um, and I think that stigma is not something that was brought on by ourselves. I think that that was brought on the impression, the uh, oppression of, 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 of mental health. Um knowledge of what mental health is. 
Uh, I also think that um, because again, we were kept in the dark about about mental health for a very long time. In my opinion, was it um, in the dark or was it denial that it was a real thing? I I, I think in my generation, they knew what it was, but it was a denial of it being a real thing. I, mm -hmm. I, I think it was a combination of both. Honestly and truly, I do. But um, I feel like um, now, whenever we're talking about it, I think that, again, I think we have so much help with social media and celebrities that are bringing it to the forefront. The conversation is a lot easier and a lot better to have. I think more people are more, more, um, are more able to kind of understand and adjust to that concept of we have words to actually go with these feelings. You can name it now, and we we can talk about it now. Let's have that conversation. And mm -hmm. I kind of felt like that would not have been possible. Like where we're at with mental health, anxiety, depression, and and, and things like that. Like I, it, I'm still surprised by it and how social media or how our celebrities that the Summer Walkers and all of the other people that came out, um, even even and even and they just knew even in the early '90s. I remember hearing songs about you know, mental health and things like that. So I, the consistency of that taking place, I think, helped a lot with people, you know, under, having these conversations. I feel like people who are like, oh, Lord, 55 and younger are more susceptible to that. I feel like if, you plus, like, if you're like 47 plus, I feel like you're kind of set in your ways. Like, my stepfather is a hoarder. My biological father has severe PTSD from being in the military. And that's part of the reasons why um, they had their separations. It's like my stepfather would be a hoarder because he grew up very, he grew up piss poor and having nothing. So once he was able to buy himself things, he just kept collecting more and more and more and more. And my father um, had PTSD so bad to the point where motorcycles rode past his house and he's tackling us down to the ground. And it's just like, but he won't do nothing about it. He doesn't believe he has it. He won't go to therapy. Send him my stepfather. He sees nothing wrong with how his apartment is and how he's living. So it's like you can keep telling them these things to their face, to their black and blue, but it's like they really have to accept it for themselves, and it's kind of hard. And I feel like they, and I'm I feel sorry, like they're, they're denying it because they feel like by them um, accepting that, then they feel like they have to admit that there's something wrong with them, and they don't want to believe that there's something wrong with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then my family, uh, my dad's side of the family, we have, I have a great aunt who is psychotic, um, has been diagnosed since my father was a child. Um, and she's real sweet, nice old lady. And she actually has lived out everybody. <laughs> that lady's <laughs> like 90 something. Um, but so I've always known what mental health was growing up, but mm -hmm. only it being paid attention to when it's on an extreme level. level. Right. All right. Um, I've known I was depressed since I was probably 12 years old and I read, I was doing something. I don't know what I was reading. I read it. I was like, huh, that sounds about right. I've also known I was bipolar since I was 18. So even though knowing these things, I was still in denial about needing medication, about needing therapy. Um, I think until you hit that point to where you're sitting in your room rocking and you can't move, um, you won't really have that push um, that you need to go. Mm -hmm. However, after going, um, I remember my parents, my mom looked at me one and she said, you seem to be in a really good mood. I said, it's called good meds. Good medication. I got some happy pills. And I got some angry pills. Changed my life. So she was like, well, keep taking it. <laughs> keep taking it. So real quick, I want to read through these comments, and I do want to go ahead and, and finish out the segment with, with, with um, just a tip. I want to make sure we acknowledge some of these people. Um, whew, yes, for the longest, my depression wasn't a thing. My anxiety is still looked at as a minor, because I look so put together with my with and with medication, everyone tells me that not to take it. But baby, I need my Lexapro and my weed. Lol. Period. Lexapro save a hoe. That's on period. Cause... Lexapro is only for men. Okay. <laughs> I took that shit one time and it was mm -hmm. not okay. 
And it had Guido on triple terrible extra. And I also and I and I also think that it's from it's for a man under or uh, over or uh, under a certain age. Because I think over an age you start messing with your like your 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 um testosterone. Your libido um, or something like that too. Yeah, it's not messing with that. Um you can't, you can't get up. Um and because um, I, I actually had uh, um um a person that I worked with um uh, that was on it and and the doctor prescribed it wrong. Um, and they were they were like 37, 38, and it messed them up sexually. They could, just couldn't do anything, so they had to be, to be on something else. Um, mm. And we looked yeah. together. Um, that really gave me. <laughs> eight other questions to move it mentally. Uh, let me see here. My grandmother refused to get help. We were talking about what Patrice was talking about earlier, but it's like they don't want to tap into their trauma, and that's a different kind of trauma. Um, talking about the, the baby boomers were, were more messed up than any other generation. Um, hey, China baby. Fucks up my sex though. So he's talking about the Lexapro. What he, mm -hmm. he said it, he does, but it does messes him up sexually. Um, I ha and I have anxiety and stress. Um, China, there is a lot to push. There, there is a lot of push. There is a lot of pushing, un pushing under the rug, and they just leave it there until never. But seeing other people talk about it is like. Yourself opens up, opens up, opens the door to having these conversations with family. Exactly, awesome. exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So I know we're a little bit over time, but y'all bear with us. Y'all <laughs> loving the conversation tonight. Um, so it's time. Time. It's time for the tip. I just the tip. And that's on her. Just the tip. Okay. Just Why the tip, is it the sick? Because it's just the tip, baby. <laughs> Oh, um, Patrice. Mm hmm. What you say about this? I said that it says just the tip, and then it's got health in parentheses in the oh. middle. I'm laughing. I'm laughing about the egg. I'm not touching it. <laughs> the egg also matches my egg. Yeah, he's got one on his arm. Mm, scrambled. I just, I just feel eggy. Sunny side up. <laughs> oh yes, sunny side up. I like the scrambled. <laughs> All right. So just the tip. It's a little off brand. It's not about like fitness or nutrition um, because so a friend of mine, Laura in Indiana, um, she gave her daughter this like little toy microscope for Christmas mm -hmm. and they took a sample of their bathroom sink, just like a little scrape oh, and man. put it under the microscope and they sent me a video. I should have sent it for you to play, but oh. it is so fucking blowing. <laughs> it is like a living world. Like you can see like little worms and like we've all been <laughs> okay, <all> please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but like really you can see like moving yeah, tardigrades and all that stuff. Bleach. Terrifying. So but I mean if you were to look at your arm, you would see the mm -hmm. skin types and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, definitely. But of course it like piqued my interest. So I Googled it a lot, like a lot, a lot. Um, and <laughs> so we're going to talk about the dirtiest items in our houses and, mm. and a couple of um, just the tips around those that probably most people do, but maybe get lazy about like myself. So this is a reminder to kill those little critters. Um, so any guesses, the three, like, oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> The three like nastiest items in the house. Your toilet scrubber. Great. The plunger. Your toilet plunger. Okay, both ding ding ding. Let's just wrap bathroom into one. Yeah. Okay. And okay. then two others. <clears throat> Your dishwasher drain. Okay. What okay. were you gonna say, Johnny? Your pillow. Oh. Shit, now that's like a whole other rabbit hole for me to go down. Yeah. <laughs> Get toothbrush? Yeah, okay, so you nailed it. Basically, it's just like the bathroom zone and then the kitchen zone, specifically the sink. Yes. Um, but within the bathroom, it, I mean, within, within the kitchen, it's the cotton rags that like mm -hmm. I mean, hanging on the stove. Oh, no. It's that guy, like the worst in the house. Uh, oh. Yeah. And oh, then no, now I gotta go throw all them shits away. No, so I've got just the tip for you. Come on. 
Um, and then also the sponge. You would think it's clean, right? Oh because God, yes, the sponge. So, no, because it sits there and it's wet and it just it just sits. And, yeah, it just colonizes all that juice. Mm. So um, the tip, so bathroom related tip I have for you. <clears throat> of course, disinfect. That's like a duh. Like just do that mm -hmm. when you think about it. Well, weekly or something. Uh, <laughs> But the other one is when you flush, every time you flush, even if it's like a tiny little pee, close the lid before you flush. And even if it's a soft little spiral, not like one of those like rush flushes, little particles float around the bathroom and land on things like your toothbrush. Yeah. So, so when you flush, just close the toilet. You don't have those little particles flying around. Keep keep the seat closed if that makes you feel even better. For me now, it does, um, <laughs> because then you've got to like put your your toothbrush in the dishwasher or like deep clean it. With no, I'm just gonna buy a new one. Right, because now you have like little poop particles chilling on your toothbrush, <laughs> and that's like scientifically backed. Damn it! Um, so I'm glad I can make your night. That's bathroom. <laughs> I'm scared. Um, and then. Another so a tip for um, kitchen is to avoid cotton rags because even a single use um, it catches the bacteria even if you're using disinfectant and then from there it colonizes and if you use it again you just spread that shit everywhere same with the sponge so what we do now because I'm a little obsessive about it is every time we do a load of laundry I just throw in the sponge and the rags. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty like much what every it. load. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't. And I, so this is a so funny, Jesse, that you that you brought this up because Chelsea called me last week randomly and asked me what I do with my sponges and whatever, and I buy the dollar sponges. Uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. I, them. <laughs> I, I use them and I throw them right away. Mm -hmm. like I'm, they're not staying on my sink. They're not staying nowhere. I throw them away. They're not staying anywhere. For that particular reason, because I know that they don't, um, and it's only a dollar, so whatever. Um, so, and, and, it, and I get the ones that's like three in a pack. Mm -hmm. um, so I just I throw them right on the way. Um, and then she, she, she was like, "So what do you use to scrub with?" So you know, like back in the day, and I know, um, at Bryce, you well, you have an old soul. So, so you know what this is? That Labrillo pad. The, oh my um, god! I knew the, that's what you were gonna say. The woo one. The real, like, if you burn it, it's gonna like <laughs> light mm -hmm. up. Like, uh, the the woo one, they're um, really thin. Really, really, it's almost like a um. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's it's like this big. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's like wire wrapped yes. up in soap, yes. like dry soap. Okay. And so people use them because it's very abrasive. Uh -huh. so you can like really like if you have stainless steel, it's perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. However, anything else you have. Fucker yeah. will rust on your sink like it's going out of start. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> it rests. It rests. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. You know that Ajax or that common that comes in the can? My grandma I love play it. with that. Mm -hmm. Love it. That's the and only like, cleaner she used, the one that came in the can. And, and she and was like, yeah. That's like yeah. the best bathroom cleaner ever. Mm -hmm. and, it does, and the Brula Pass does take the coating off your pants if you have like um, yep. that. Anything of the the steel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So the the bonus feeling uh, Oh, did I cut you off? Go ahead, Jesse. Uh, go ahead. The the bonus tip is um, of course, and we all know this, your phone and keyboard are like a close mm -hmm. third to like the nastiest. No. Um, so yeah, you're supposed to wipe your phone and your keyboard every day. Like more than every day. So yeah. there's a study done where of all sampled keyboards, 96%, almost 100% um, of keyboards and phones were contaminated with pathogens like E. coli and staph. Mm. 96%. So no. I'm like looking at my keyboard right now thinking. Me too. I gotta go wash my hands. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, of course, like we don't get sick like from this all the time, but these things are just like, I'm definitely going to be more mindful. Right. Not right. I, didn't, I don't mm. want poop on my toothbrush, you know? Oh. Yeah, I got to burn my toothbrush. Right. Well, here's the thing. That's never been a problem for me because what I do is, and I, I, I put my toothbrush back in my pack. 
You have a pack? Mm -hmm. so I, the first pack that it comes in, mm -hmm. I would um brush my teeth, mm -hmm. clean it, finish after I brush my teeth, clean my toothbrush, and I put it back in the pack and I would That's set it so on the like, I, You have so much O C D, it is not even funny. If I and if and if something happened to the pack or like if like I see the like because Greg will go in the bathroom before me and the pack is mm -hmm. like inside the sink. Like I'm nervous that the the tooth my toothbrush done fell out at some point and it, it it messes with my mind. So I throw the whole thing away and get another whole new toothbrush. Like I do not care about my toothbrush at all. My toothbrush don't even touch his. Like that's how like I cannot. Ugh, uh, uh, it's nasty. <laughs> I cannot do that. Uh, I am very very big on my toothbrush. On my toothbrush, I can't. I'm not. So you don't I'm, share your toothbrush with Greg? No. I, I wish like hell. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna be on first 48. I promise you that. I promise you. I'm gonna be on first 48. <laughs> we can share a lot of things, but not the toothbrush. I am not sharing. I don't yeah. like sharing my wash rag, let alone toothbrush. Period. I, mean, I don't share my wash rag either. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Oh, shit. Mm -mm. Jesse, any more tips for us with the. Uh, That's it. Y'all trying to make me feel fucked up about cleaning, huh? All right. <laughs> and also think about public toilets too like those like those super flushers that's what fucks with my head because some of them you can't even close the toilet so you have to like foot flush and run away mm -hmm. the, the only time i, I don't even use wild. I, 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 I don't even use public bathrooms I'm, when I, when, I'm gonna tell you something I will be in this office struggling all day <laughs> because I'm not sitting my butt down. I don't care how much tissue it is. I have to be like literally like having like I have like water has to be coming out my butt. And I don't mean to get, you know, that, you know, but it is what I just cannot use public bathroom. I just can't do it. In college, when I lived in the corridor style dorm, I mm -hmm. would wipe the toilet, the whole toilet down with the Clorox wipes. Then I'll put the toilet seat cover on top of it. Then I'll still make another TP with the tissue to put on top of the toilet seat cover. Like that's how I did it. I just Are could you not. Serious? I'm so serious. I could not. That's right. I could not. That's right. Look. And like what? that's the type of dorm where you share a bathroom with everybody on your floor. So like it wasn't like I had yeah. my own private bathroom. Like so like I had to. I literally used to go to the bathroom with my Clorox wipes, clean the whole toilet, put the toilet seat cover on. Put two toilet seat covers on there, make a whole nother TP out of toilet tissue just so I can sit down on the toilet. I couldn't do it. That's, I'm sorry. And it's the last thing. I'm about to go. I promise. I'm about to go. I promise I'm about to go. But I have I think I was at the airport and it, I was in a different city, a different, a different um state. I don't I don't remember which state I was in, but like the toilet seat had like so like you know, like only I've in Charlotte, and, it, and, it, and there may be a place in Charlotte that I don't know about that I've never been that you guys can may identify. But like you know how like the the toilet seat holders are on or the toilet seat covers are on like the wall mm -hmm. you gotta pull them and then put them on the seat. Mm -hmm. No, like I don't know what city or state I was in. I do not remember. But like the toilet had automatic, automatic toilet seat covers. Toilet seat cover, and so you would press the button and mm -hmm. then it like rip itself out. Mm -hmm. And I knew when to come on. It was so interesting. I'm self sitting there playing with it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, I, it was so interesting. And everything was covered. Like I was like, oh my god, my mind is blown. Why <laughs> haven't nobody? Like, this needs to be everywhere. Like this is everywhere. It needs to be everywhere. <laughs> Jess, so funny. thank you for your tip. You're thank so welcome. You. Thank you. <laughs> you gave me anxiety, Jesse. <laughs> me too. I'm glad I can share. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh um uh, uh, before we go today um for all of the people that are still being with us um i do want to let you know that we are currently hiring for two positions um they are eis positions and i know that some of you guys don't may not know what that means um and i'm just gonna so i'm just gonna give you a little brief um a little something a little brief a little a, a little light as patrice would say um and it's pretty much what Bryce was describing earlier. We do a not traditional style of case management for people that are out of care um, or and or are new to care and or are experiencing different things while they are positive, meaning mm -hmm. they are pregnant um, and positive, meaning that they are going through some type of 
event or something, you know, something that may create a barrier for them to get to the hospital, get to the clinic or doctor's office or in care or to stay in care. Um, we intervene and try to make sure that we keep that momentum going um, or start that momentum for them. Um, with them, not for them, with them, I apologize. Um, and so I just want to let you know that. Um, so if you want to apply, please, 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 um, please, 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 please go to our website, which is trillionfamilyservices.org. Um, go to careers and it is listed there. Um, and you'll be able to find it. And we are, and I also post it on my own social media and on the Keeping It 100 page as well. So you can go back and look at those and, and click the link and apply. Um, mm -hmm. But that's it. Thank you for joining us. Um, and last but not least, before we go, you know, we're going to do our thing. <laughs> Getting tested? It's sexy. <laughs>